Hello mudlarking friends, I am back down here on the foreshore. I've been away, now I'm home. Let's see what we can find. Okay guys, so I've found my coin line. You know how it goes. There's one, there's another. I've got another in my pocket. They're all modern, but the theory is, as I always say, we're looking for items of the same, approximately the same size and weight. Look, there we go. For those of you who doubt this, it works. So here's my coin line, and I'm just going to carry along for a while to see what we can spy. Obviously, loads of pins everywhere. I haven't got my pin gloves on today, so I won't be bothering with those. I'll leave those here. Um, and yeah, just having just having a good look through every time the boats stop racing past <laughs> and I try not to get soaked. All right, let's carry on. I was just winked off my coin row. <laughs> there I was uh, by the tide that just blasted in. Anyway, it sent me a couple of paces up and I have spotted something marvellous. Here it is. It's a piece of medieval pottery. Oh, look at that, it's lovely. And this is part of a jug handle. You can see here the stabbing uh, pieces and the slashing pieces there. Pieces, what am I on? Anyway, you can see the stabbing and the slash marks. And they are both to help grip the jug handle and they are also a decorative element. So this is a whiteware and I will put some comparisons up on the screen for you. But beautiful, the green splashed glaze, love it. Back down in that little spot and look, I found one of those weights. It's a weight from a seine net, a fishing net, but this is a tiny one. I just need to grab my trowel because the boat's coming. Uh, yeah, this is a smaller one than I normally find and they can possibly date to the 15th century. A fishing boat was found with a bunch of these on seine nets still intact. And that was certainly 15th century. But anyway, this is really cool. It's a, a really sweet one. Okay. Here we go, another little weight. It doesn't look rolled, or does it? I'm not sure. It looks just like a solid cast weight. Yeah, that must be the seam from the cast, from the mold. That's pretty cool. Keeping that one. I think we must have had a shake up over here because I just um, flipped this over and found it's one of the thumb decorated grip handle uh, redware vessels and you don't find them that often anymore so I do tend to take them home. There we go. I just spotted what seems to be the remains of a, looks like a work boot, maybe a Victorian boot. I'm just going to have a little look here. I mean, it's pretty uh, done in, it's seen its, its best days, I think, but I'm just going to have a gentle little look here because maybe it will be interesting. All right, so I got the shoe up. Actually, it's a boot <clears throat> and it's in this many pieces. You can see there is, on the back there, that kind of horseshoe hobnail thing. So what I'm gonna do is take all this home and see if I can do a good reconstruction job on it because I've got quite a lot of it here. So I just wanna test out how much of a go I can give it. Right guys, I've got it home. Here it is, ye old Franken boot. I'm not actually sure where some of it goes, but I am sure where other bits go. So look, here you go. Let me show you an obvious bit. There's a heel and a sole with an eight 
stamped on it there. Look how warm they were. They must have been just worn out completely until the very end. So there is the heel in the back of the shoe. So with a little work, I can shape that into a recognizable shoe shape. So we've got that. There we go. So that's the toe leather. I'm gonna have to learn the terminology for this stuff. Now, this is either the very front of the boot uh, or it's another boot and there is the horseshoe bit there now I thought they went on the back but there we go I'm gonna have to learn about these Victorian Edwardian boots because I'm not so hot on them that is a bit of the sole now here's a bit that's confusing me looks like a tongue but it has these lace holes either side so how did that work how did that go together am i just not seeing it in the right way so i've got hope for this lot of leather i've saved i think we can do something with it i've got to keep cleaning it for now and then i'm going to reconstruct this boot somehow I'm a bit confused as, as to whether I've got one or two boots, because look, here's another part. Maybe I have two here. Anyway, I will keep you updated and we'll see where we get with it. I've just flicked up this nice little piece of redware and the reason I say it's nice is because you can see it must have been some sort of plate or dish. And I love that. It has been glazed. It doesn't look slip coated I think it's just glazed I'll check that out at home and here you can see look at this how precise this formation is and I'm sure that was a plate or a butter dish or a cooking dish of some kind I'll put some info up on the screen for you Okay, well this is interesting, but what the heck is it? Look at that, it looks pirateized. It looks like something splashed down in there and caused all these bubbles. I just haven't a clue, so I'm gonna do some research. I've just spied down here something on its belly. Let's turn it over. Now, that's either an extremely worn uh, something or 
It might be a cupel. I think it might be a cupel. I'm afraid not, guys. It's not a cupel. Having spoken to Richard Henry, who is my eyes for this one, it's actually most likely a really water-worn section of a base of boardware pottery dating from around 1500 to 1700. Now, you can see, if you look really closely, it's been thrown on a wheel, which cupels were not. I think they were impressed. They were made in a mould. They were pressed um, in a mould. I'll put something up on the screen about that. Also, the biggest clue here is that this fabric has not been fired at a high temperature. Now, cupels were indeed fired at a high temperature. So there we go. Little lesson. Not everything that looks like something is that thing. Let's do a classic spot to find. I haven't picked it up myself yet. So I'll give you a few seconds before I start zooming in. Okay, seen it? Of course you have, here it is. There we go. Nice little 18th century pipe bowl and a little portion of the stem. When I get home, I will tap that out, that mud after it's dried, and we might find some ash in the bottom of there, some old tobacco and ash. All right, there we go, keeping that one. As if by magic, one pipe bowl turns up with a bit of stem, and now I've spied something down here. Ooh, and I've just been distracted by something over here too. That's pretty. Piece of tin glazed delf weather, maybe an ointment pot or a plate, more likely. Right, I'm not promising anything, but let's see. Oh, <laughs> damn. I said I wasn't going to promise anything. It was tempting though. There we go. And I don't think there's a bowl in there. I might have a quick check. Oh, hang on. What, what have we got here? Right, look. Stems abound there. We've got a little line of stems. You see, this uh, whole gathering in size and weight is relevant also to other non-metallic items like pottery and, and uh, pipes. Okay, I think that's it for us and the pipes. Well, I never, another nice little pottery piece, medieval again, and this time looks to me like it's Hertfordshire greyware. That's another interesting piece. Gosh, what a strange day where all these similar things are turning up. That's cool, you can see the stab marks there. Uh, I'm not sure if that's, maybe I think that's the rim of a vessel. So maybe it was stab, stab marks around the rim. That's really interesting. I think it's Hertfordshire Greyware. I'm going to check on that. But this piece of rib here caught my eye for a fairly obvious reason. There. Now, look, there's the rib. Large animal. So, has this been done in the water or was this animal shot in the chest uh, or has this taken a knock in the water and someone's pierced it through there and then sort of come out the back and split it or has this split happened afterwards I mean that looks fairly fresh but it's really interesting so there yeah, food for thought possibly quite literally Now I've been after one of these for a very long time and this is one of those with a twist. So I'm talking about a tile with a paw print from a cat or a dog in. Now this, I think, is actually finger prints of whoever made this tile. So I'm going to get that home and look at it more closely but if I can see in there some signs of fingertips. Um, that would be pretty cool. Alright guys, well that is me done for the day. The tide is creeping up and in. Uh, I think we had some really lovely finds today. We had that really nice piece of medieval whiteware with the green splashes. We had some of the other medieval stuff and that shoe. It will be a few weeks before I can do anything with it but fingers crossed at some point soon I will have 
a reconstructed Victorian boot for you. Bonus section. Okay, guys, what I want to do is just show you some of the finds other people found. Not me. These are finds from other people. And they were found on the foreshore when Steve Brooker, Mud God, and I were doing the Mudlarking Masterclass um, to raise money for the RNLI. As I said before, we raised £900, which was incredible. So here are some finds that people found that day. Lots and lots of musket balls. A load of lead shot, could be for muskets, carbines, different kind of guns. And this ring looks like a Victorian ring to me. I think it's one of those belt rings. I'm not sure about the marks in there. I'm gonna catch up with the people who found this, but I don't know if they've had it looked at or if they found out about the marks. I love the design of these belt rings. It looks like it might be missing or it's worn a little bit, but um, really cool find. Another great find by Reuben the Mudlark is this Greenwich Hospital button. So there you go, you can see the anchor on there very clearly, the G, the H, and then the logo above the anchor there. That's a lovely little find. So what else do we have this lovely button? Now this was found by, hmm, I can't actually remember, it might have been Stan Mild on Instagram. A lovely little Victorian button there, I've got one myself. And then here, last thing I wanted to show you is this millstone. Now this apparently is a Tudor millstone, it's a Henry VIII millstone. So Steve says, I haven't found much more info out about that, but if I do, I'll do a little video on it because it's a great thing. Alright, until next time, stay safe, keep it cool, 